Linda. So you're a former U.S. Federal Aviation Safety Inspector. What is going on? Because it seems like barely a day goes by without another incident involving a major passenger plane. You know, Linda, there are a lot of things going on, but statistically I've looked at the numbers and it really, there hasn't seen a sharp increase in any kind of safety hazards or incidents as compared to last year. So it really has a lot to do with how these things are happening and not really the increase in number, but how severe they are. Of all the incidents we've had and we've seen in recent weeks, uh, the door plug falling off a plane, a panel flying off a plane, a tire flying off a plane, pilots claiming they temporarily lost control of a flight between Sydney and Auckland. Of all those incidents, what concerns you the most? Uh, I'll tell you, Linda, what concerns me most right now is that all of these incidents we're talking about, they don't have to do with engineering, they don't have to do with maintenance per se, they have to do with individual human beings making errors or bad decisions about things, uh, maybe missed inspection, or perhaps uh, we're still not clear about the Auckland flight, whether it was a, a flight attendant that bumped into a pilot or whether there was a technical issue, we really don't know at this point. But it points to a lot to the human factor that always is present, but it concerns me that right now it seems like there's more and more of these human factor errors going on. And, and of all these incidents, uh, most uh, uh, affect Boeing planes. Critics say that for too long, Boeing has been able to self-regulate. Uh, they have no competition in the US and so generally no one to answer to. How much truth is there to that? Well, they do answer to the FAA, however, they hadn't been doing that as much as they are now. With the organizational designee program that they had in place, they were able to kind of regulate themselves and decide what things that they do are really safety related or what things need to be double checked. So now the FAA has gone back on that and, and they're much more participating in those types of decisions as to what Boeing is doing on their manufacturing line. I think that's a step in the right direction for sure. Yeah, definitely. Of course, uh, we know about one whistleblower, John Barnett, who worked for Boeing for 30 years on the 787 Dreamliners. He was found dead, reportedly by suicide. He had claimed that Boeing workers had been pressured to fit substandard parts to aircrafts. He claimed that there were serious issues with the ox oxygen system, meaning that one in four oxygen masks might not work in an emergency. And overall, he said, uh, because of the rush to get aircraft out, that safety standards at times were compromised. And we know that a 2017 review by the FAA upheld some of those claims. Uh, people obviously want to be able to trust the planes that they're flying on, right? What more can be done? Well, I think the things that are being done right now are, are really uh, going to make a huge difference. Number one, is the more participation by the FAA as far as oversight on the line. What that does is it gives the employees the out or the option to go around their direct line of management, around them to a quality supervisor. Now, they, Boeing specifically has put in a new quality control person and uh, Kate, I think Lund is her last name, but uh, she is there to assure that that, that is a well aware, that the employees are well aware that they can go around their direct supervisor and bring up safety issues. So that's step one. However, in any, any manufacturing process, any company really, you have to be concerned as an employee, I'm bringing up something that can cost the company money. So it really has to be emphasized and there has to be a safety valve to allow them to do this without any retribution whatsoever. And I think putting Kate in this position at Boeing has really made a big difference. And I think also the FAA being more participating in the, the line, on the line of assembly is going to make a big difference as well. I'd love to see the fact that they're going back to this more participating uh, role and allowing the employees really to be the quality control, the people that really are there looking at it to say this is an issue and now they need to have be sure they em emphasize the ability for them to go around their direct line of supervision and go above them and go straight to who's going to make a difference. And finally, what would you say to passengers who are seeing all these incidents add up and are concerned now about flying? Well, I am one of those passengers, as is my granddaughter and everyone else. So what I would say to them, and I have said to my family, is again, statistically, 
Uh, flying in an airplane is the safest place to be. It literally is the safest place to travel. And so I, for that reason, I still go there. there. Are there ways that can be improved? Are there challenges ahead of us? As, as technology improves, as things get more and more complex, this concern that I have about the human factors and the human decision-making is going to be an issue. But as I see it right now today, I don't think there's anything that's, that's concerning to me. I still feel like it's the safest place to be. And the fact that we're bringing all these things to light right now actually to me says a lot. It tells me that there's no longer hidden things going on. There's no longer hidden safety concerns or threats that we don't know about. If there is a safety concern now, we know about it. And that's not how it's been over the last five or six years. But right now, that's how it is. And I think that that's a good thing, that that's, that's being known, that there are safety issues being exposed and that we know about them, but we're still in the safest system of travel that, it, that exists today. All right, David Susi, we'll leave it there for now. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you, Linda.